Shalom, shalom family. Shalom everyone. It's your boy Koku Efriye here. How are we all doing? I trust and believe we are all doing wonderful. We are all doing great. Uh, we can only be grateful for the faithfulness of Yahuwah giving us life. It's not everyone that has got this. For the, uh, to the departed soul we say may Yahuwah uh, have mercy and grant them a restful uh, 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 place in him in the afterlife. But for us we pray and ask that he continue to favor us with the strength, the breath of life, and the favor that we need uh, uh, to achieve that which we have set our hearts uh, on to achieving in life so that his name will be brought to the greatest esteem here on earth as it is in, in the Shamayim, as it is in heaven. So I'm very excited today to be coming your way. Um, this video is actually uh, long, long overdue. The last video I did, um, this video is going to be a continuation to the last video I did. And in the last video I did, we based um, our discussion on the on the topic, on, on the scriptural passage, the book of John the Gospel, chapter 4, verse 20 to 24. The book of John the Gospel, chapter 4, verse 20 to 24. And I remember raising a question that um, if salvation is prescribed to be from the tribe of Yehuda, then what is it that we are hearing from the Greeks? What is it that we are hearing from the Romans? What is it that we are hearing from the Europeans, even the English? Okay? If salvation is prescribed to be from the tribe of Yehuda, as declared by Yahushua the truth himself, then what, is this, what, what are all these noises that we are hearing from the Europeans claiming the, 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 the sole authority over the salvation of the human soul? So we are going to go back into the scriptures and we are going to take it from John the Gospel chapter 4 verse 20 to 24. And uh, we're not going to waste much time just going straight into it. Okay, so bear with me. Come with me and let's, let's, um, let's find out what the scripture says. John, the gospel, chapter 4, verse 20 to 24, and I read. This is the Sumerian woman speaking. She said, Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Yahushua said to the woman, Woman, believe me. Woman, believe me, this is to tell us that we are to believe only the truth, to find salvation, to find peace, to find joy, to find completeness in life. Anytime you hear Yahushua speaking, you should understand that it is the true interpretation or the true response or the true version uh, uh, of the matter, the true uh, uh, explanation or the true response to that issue at hand. Anytime you hear Yahushua speak, it is the truth that you are hearing. And therefore, we are bound, or we, if we want salvation for our soul, then we have to believe the truth as being spoken by Yahushua himself. So he said to the woman, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming where neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. Verse 22. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. For salvation is from the Yahudim. In other words, salvation comes from the tribe of Yehuda. Verse 23. But the hour is coming and is now here. When the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. Alhim is a spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So what we are seeing here is that Yahushua is painting a picture to us. That in order for you to, to, to be able to worship the Father in spirit and in truth, your soul needs to be, uh, your soul needs to be liberated by the, the, uh, by the Ruach of truth in order for you to achieve that. Without you accepting the truth, you cannot worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Brothers and sisters, everybody is worshipping. There are so many worshippers, but very few are called. Many are called, but very few are actually worshipping the Father in spirit and in truth. Why? Because very few has, have embraced the word of truth have embraced the revelational truth 
that Yahushua is bringing to us here. Everybody is worshipping. Let Sunday come and go to all these churches. Let Friday come and go to all these mosques. Go to all these temples all around the world. Everyone is worshipping. But the question is, are we worshipping the Father in spirit and in truth? You can only worship the Father in spirit and in truth. By first of all, knowing the truth. And secondly, embracing the truth with your body, your mind and your soul. Okay? So the Father is seeking for those who have accepted the truth to worship Him. He said, you worship, not, you worship what you do not know, but we worship what we know. For salvation comes from the tribe of Yehuda. Hence the question I raised, if salvation is prescribed to come from Yehuda, then what is it that we are hearing from the Greeks, from the Romans, from the Europeans, from the Africans, from the Indians, from the Hindus, from whatever? Okay? If you go to hospital and you are having a, a headache, and a diarrhea and it is diagnosed that um, um, the headache is, is, is coming as a result of the diarrhea and you are prescribed a, a, a medication or let's say you are prescribed a medication for the headache you have to understand that the root cause of the headache is not being dealt with and so the problem is going to continue even it's going to worsen because all you are doing is, to, is, 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 is relieving the pain that you are getting from the headache. But you are not dealing with the actual true source of the problem, which is the diarrhea you are getting. So before you know, you, 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 you become dehydrated and that can lead to you know, major issues, major uh, um, health issues in the near future. So unless you deal with the true uh, 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 source of the problem, you ain't getting anywhere. Okay? You ain't getting any breakthrough. So if salvation is prescribed to be from the tribe of Yehuda, then the tribe of Yehuda is where we should go for this key to salvation. We should not go to the Europeans. We should not go to the Rom Romans. We should not go to the Greeks. We should not go to the Africans. We should not go to the, to the Asians. We should go to Judea. And we should go to the cultural understanding and the cultural interpretation of the word salvation so that we can get that key to unlock the door of salvation for our soul, for our human souls. Okay? So what is this key that unlocks the door of salvation? What is this prescription that will bring our souls onto, on, onto, onto liberation and salva salvation for us, for us to be able to worship the Father in spirit and in truth? We are going to find this key. And that we will go into the book of Acts chapter 4 verse 10 to 12. Acts chapter 4 verse 10 to 12. And I read. There was a miracle that took place. And the apostles were questioned how, what authority did they have? Where did they get that authority to heal this person? How were they able to heal this person that, that, that um, this miracle was, was performed on? So the book of Acts chapter 4, we will be reading from verse 10 to 12. And I read, this is Peter speaking. He said, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Yashraya that by the name Yahushua, Hamashiach of Nazareth, whom you killed, or whom you murdered, whom Yahuwah raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. Verse 11. This Yahushua is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. Verse 12. And there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So here we are seeing that the key 
that unlocked the door of salvation for the soul of a human being to be saved is a name. Let me draw your mind to something. How many of you have done access before? Access as in, uh, have used access before? Access as in this computer program, database. You know, database, the, the logo for database is a key. And database holds information about a person's identity. And the number one key that unlocks the identity to a person is the person's name. You see, the truth is being hidden in plain sight. Yet we do not have the eyes to see. The key to unlock the soul, the key to unlock salvation for the human soul is a name. And that name comes from the tribe of Yehuda. And there should be no other name among men under the sun that is given among men that can perform this particular thing except this name that comes from Yehuda and was revealed by, by the Malak or by the, by, the, by the angels from the heavens, from the Shamahim. Unto, unto Miriam and, and Yosef to be, to be used in naming him. Okay? So this name cannot be changed. This name cannot be replaced. This name cannot be translated. As a matter of fact, names are not translated. Names are transliterated. And so if you have this understanding, then you wouldn't want to play with your salvation by replacing his name or translating his name into, into various different forms. If he said salvation comes from the tribe of Yehuda, then we should return to the cultural understanding of Yehuda, to the cultural linguistics of Yehuda, in order to retrieve this name. I, uh, when I was growing up, I read this book, um, um, Ali Baba and the Forty Thieves. They had uh, this, this, this name uh, uh, that they used to to, to split open the rock in which they kept all their, their treasures. If you do not speak this name, the rock will not open. You see, the truth is given us and it's hidden in plain sight, yet we can't see. These thieves will come, will, will, will go and do their robbery and they will bring their spoil and, and, and when they come to the rock, a huge rock, they will say the word, open sesame. And the rock will open. And they will go in. Close the semi and the rock will close. Okay? So if you, if you go there and you say anything else, the rock will not open. And a farmer actually heard, saw and heard them go in and come out. So he went and pronounced and declared the same words. And the rock opened. He went in and found all these treasures. But on his way back, he forgot what the word that he used to come in. And so, these thieves came back and saw him and killed him. So, the, it's, it's the same thing. If he said his name is Yahushua, then you change not his name to expect salvation for your soul. Let's be frank and let's be true with ourselves. This is why scripture says you should work your own salvation. It's not about what I'm saying. It's not about what anybody is saying. It's not about what the majority is, 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 is running with. But it's what you have come to prove as the truth. That is what will save your soul. Hence, work out your own salvation, brothers and sisters. Okay? He said, there is no other. And I want you to underline the word, no other name. Because we are going to go for the precept to that particular phrase. No other name. Let me repeat the tw verse 12 again. And there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So if you bear with me, um, come with me. We are going for the precept to that. Come with me to the book of um, Isaiah. The book of Isaiah chapter 42 verse 8. The book of Isaiah chapter 42 verse 8. And I read. He said, I am Yahuwah. Of course, in your Bible you have the Lord. This is, the, this, is, this is the wickedness they've caused us. They have replaced the Father's name with titles. And if you, if, you, if you go into scripture, the Father himself declared explicitly that call me no more Baal, uh, 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 Baal. Call me no more Baal. Because he detests the title Baal. The children of Israel were, were confusing the Father's name with Baal. 
So most of the time they were replacing the father's name. Their, their ministers, their leaders, the priests, because of their corruption, were taking away the father's name to replace it with Baal. And there's a whole teaching on that. We'll get to that in the near future. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 8, and I read. He said, I am Yahuwah. That is my what? That is my name. My esteem I give to no other. Remember, as I said to you, underline the word no other name. So his name is Yahuwah. And there is no other. No other what? No other name. Nor my praise to carved idols. He said he gives his esteem to no other name. And he's praised his praise to carved idols. And if you jump to uh, um, um, Psalm number 113, verse 3, you will know why he said that. He said, from the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name Yahuwah is to be praised. So his praises and his esteem is given to no other name, but that name which he revealed through Moshe to the children of Israel to be used. So if you are using the Lord today, if you are using God today, all these false titles that we, for some reason, somehow, has labeled the Father with, you and you see, he's not getting the praise and the worship and the esteem we are supposed to give him. Rather, the one being the beneficiary of all these is Satan himself that operates by these, these titles. The father moves and operates by his name. Okay, this is the basic spiritual principle that all of us, we have to know. If you are lacking this understanding... You are getting nowhere spiritually as far as our relationship with our Heavenly Father is concerned. Please understand this because we need to get this right. The Father deserves the praise and the worship from us because He is the very breath of life in us. Let us allow not the devil, let us allow not for the devil to, 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 to be the recipient of that which is intended for our Heavenly Father. You see, when we praise the Father in the spirit and in truth, do you know that it, it makes us powerful? It, it is power on its own to us. It makes us really very powerful. But when Satan gets the praise and the worship that is meant for our Father, it makes him powerful in our lives. That is why nothing is, seems to work for us in, in our lives. I heard one say some, some time ago, the more I pray, the more the, the, the situation gets worse. It's because we lack this, this spiritual understanding and knowledge. Okay? So he said, I'm Yahuwah, this is my name. My esteem I give to no other, nor my praise to no carved images or no carved idols and the, the other precept is also found in the book of exodus chapter 3 verse 15 exodus chapter 3 verse 15 and i read he said Elohim also said to moshe or moses say this to the people of yashrael yahuwah the power of your fathers the power of abraham the power of isaac the power of jacob has sent me to you this is my name forever and thus i am to be remembered throughout all generation so you see here again, the name he revealed to Moshe should have been the name we have, which uh, we should have used since the time of Moshe up to now. So if we have deviated from that name, then there is something fundamentally wrong with our faith. If we are mixing and, and mingling his name with all these false de uh, uh, names and false titles, he is not there. The Bible says he is only where two or three are gathered in his name this name he's talking about and so if you are not uh, uh, doing things in this one and only name mixing his name with a whole lot of false names the father is not there because he is set apart and it's only his name that sets him apart amongst his people okay being set apart mean means some in my language is is it doesn't it doesn't want to be mixed with others because there are so many gods there are so many lords 
And so when you refer to him as a Lord, which of the Lords are you talking about? There you come back to his name again. So it is actually his name, only his name, we should use in relating to him, in praying to him, in worshipping him, in encouraging each and every one of us, in encouraging one another by this name. Praying to one another by this name. Strengthening one another by this name. Because he is his name. Hence the reason he said, I am that I am. My name is that I am. It is all about his name, family. Because a good name is better than all the riches, all the wealth of titles that is out there. And not only is his name good, we know the scripture says his name is excellent. How excellent is Yahuwah's name? Hallelujah. So now we know that there is no other name. And we, 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 we have seen here what this key to the salvation of the human soul is. And that is the one that came in his father's name, Yahushua. And Yahushua means Yahuwah is the salvation to those that cries out unto him. Hallelujah. I love this. I love, 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 love this so much. Right. So, um, so now, if we go back to Acts chapter 4, he said, You, the builders, the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, has become the cornerstone. So we are going back in time to find out what this stone is. Brothers and sisters, you are going to be amazed. This is where this system called the Babylonian system came into being. When you turn away from the prescriptive path or the prescriptive order of Yahuwah, then you open yourself, you draw yourself into the Babylonian system of corruption, the Babylonian system of, of, of worship, which Satan is seated at, uh, at the helm of. Okay? So we are going back to Genesis chapter 11, verse 1 to 9. The, tight, the topic of that passage is the Tower of Babel. The Tower of Babel. So without wasting much time, let's, straight, let's go in straight and, and find out what the scripture says in this wise. The Tower of Babel. Genesis 11, chapter 11, verse 1 to 9. And I read. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. Did you hear that? The whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shina. The land of Shina means watch of him that sleep. And there's a powerful revelation here. Let me carry on. I'll come back to that. The land of Shina and settled there. So you see, they moved from the east to the west. The east represents the rising of the light, the rising of the sun. And they were heading towards where the sun sets. The dawning or the coming of the night where there is no light. So they are moving from the light into darkness. Are you catching the revelation? The people moved from the west which represents the rising of the sun where there is full light. To the west where there is darkness and they settled in a place called what shina and shina means watch of him that sleeps so now they are moving away from the presence of yahuwah into a place where they, they are going to need even the more the need to look after one another they are going to need the security throughout the night hours and we all know that when it is night that is when all the the freaks and the vampires comes out okay so verse 3 and they said to one another come let us make what breaks and burn them thoroughly and they had bricks for what stones they had brick for what stone instead of stone they rejected the stone and created their own what stone which which is bricks are you catching the revelation brothers and sisters yahuwah has given them his own stone of salvation 
Now they are saying that let us reject that stone and create our own stone so that we can ensure that on this land called Shina, where, where we need security, we can provide our own security. This is basically what they are saying. They are rejecting the security of Yahuwah for their own security. They think they can create their own security. They forgot what uh, 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 was written in the book of Psalm chapter 20. Chapter uh, Psalm 1 2 1 verse 6 to 8. As David wrote, the sun will not strike you by day, neither will the moon by night. If you are with Yahuwah, Yahuwah will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. Yahuwah will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forever. Hallelujah, Yahuwah. You cannot reject the stone of Yahuwah and expect to receive complete safety. This is what they did. They rejected the stone as, as, as was repeated by, by, by Peter in the book of Acts chapter 4. The stone that was rejected, rejected by you, the builders, have become the cornerstone. Let me repeat verse 3 on again. And they said to one another, come, let us make bricks. In other words, come, let us create our own stone and bend them thoroughly so that they will be hard. We can do it. And they had bricks for stone and butamine and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, take very particular attention on, on, on what is coming up now. Uh, if, you, if you can, underline it. Then they said, Come, let us build. Did Peter not say, you know, the stone that you builders have rejected? In life, we are all building something. We are building our lives. We are building our faith. We are building our... Life is all about building. Even Yahushua himself said, Upon this rock, upon the name of his father, which is the rock, Yahuwah is the rock, and we know that stones comes from rocks. So the Father is the rock himself. The Mount Zion we're talking about. That is Yahuwah's name. And Yahushua comes from, from, from this massive rock that brings salvation. Are you catching the revel revelation, fam? He said, upon this rock I'll build my assembly. Upon the revelation of my father's name, I will build my assembly. And the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. That is why we are still here. That is why me, Kwaku Afri, is standing before you. I am still here. Because my life is being built on this rock. That is why the rain comes. That is why the storms rage. Things that are supposed to crush me completely. Because of the rock upon which I'm standing, I'm not being moved. Yahushua said it, upon this rock I'll build my assembly and the gaze and the storms of hell shall not prevail against it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hua. Then they said, come let us build for ourselves a city. Let us build for ourselves a city and a tower with its top to the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves. Let's pause right there. Let us make a name for ourselves. Let us create a name for ourselves. When they were rejecting the true name of the Mashiach, the stone of salvation, they were creating a name for themselves, creating a name in different cultures creating a name in different languages didn't he say there is no other language there is no other name in any other language now they are creating names all over the place if you go to africa they call him yesu if you go to greek they call him jesus if you go to england they call him jesus if you go to the latin they call him uh, what, 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 what? If salvation is prescribed to be from the tribe of Yahuda, why all these noise? Why are we confusing ourselves 
mixing names claiming to be the authority of salvation for our souls let's not deceive ourselves brothers and sisters this is where the system of babylon came all about and didn't he say in the book of proverbs chapter 18 verse 10 and i read he said the name yahuwah is a strong tower the righteous runs into it and is safe the righteous not you the wicked not you the hypocrite not you that lie not you that is after the 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 the, the, the wealth of this world not you not you that is after the pleasures of this world at the expense of the souls of, of your neighbors not you but the righteous that is suffering will run into it what does it mean to run into the strong tower you see that which is accessible to you is what you will immediately run to isn't it it means that if you have built your life if you have built your faith if the name yahuwah is close to you didn't he say draw near unto me and i'll draw near unto you if the name the true name of the father and his son is that close to you if there is trouble you will run immediately into it and you'll find safety but if you are confusing yourself if you are in babylon if you are in babel falling for all these created names they have given us then it will be very difficult for the righteous to run into the right true name because instead of you committing into this particular name as I, I, we say it in my, in my language meaning if you concentrate your urine in one place you see that it's, it's be, it begins to bubble that shows power if you are to unite both of your eyes in looking through the, 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 the opening or, or, or the mouth of a bottle you will see clearly that is power but if you are to divide your eyes and be confused there is always going to be confusion and there is no one that is confused that is ever going to see salvation you cannot see salvation of the father through his son in confusion and this is what the devil is doing bringing us into confusion about the true name of our heavenly father and that of his son so i will pause this one here i've just gone over my 30 minutes limit i'll pause this one here and we will carry on from here you have to stay tuned because powerful revelations are coming and at this point it's important that um, you understand that the greatest gift the greatest thing upon the face of the earth is the soul of the human being that is why the father sent his only begotten son to die in order to save it and so let us not make the great work the father did as far as the salvation of our souls are concerned let us not make it be put in vain okay so with that being said this is your boy koku afriye thank you very much for sharing this moment with me and i'll come again your way um hopefully tomorrow and we'll carry on from here shalom